One of the harder parts of mastering any new CMS is trying to figure out how to get the data out of the CMS and render it onto a web page or an app or whatever. Now, if you decided to use Contentful as your CMS of choice, you may have noticed quite quickly that you have a plethora of ways to access the data in the CMS. So out of the box, Contentful ships with a content delivery API, an administration API, a user management API, a GraphQL layer, four officially supported NPM packages, eight SDKs, as well as a handy few marketplace apps that you can make use of. So what I thought it might be useful to do in this video is give you a bird's eye view on what you need to know in order to master data access within Contentful. Now, in this video, you will learn what bits of data you need to successfully communicate with Contentful and how to generate these within the CMS. I'm also going to cover some of the hidden gotchas that can easily catch you out on a project and make you miss that ever increasing deadline. Now, these are the things that can cause you hours of head scratching at first. However, once you master, it will make complete sense. Now, the first API that we're going to cover is a classic and it's called the smash on the subscribe button API and help me out with that pesky YouTube algorithm by clicking on like. Now, if you haven't come across this channel before, my name is John and I release a new video every Sunday that will help you build enterprise grade websites and make you a bona fide coding legend. So if you haven't already, you know what to do. Now, if the reason why you've come to this video is to learn more about Contentful, then it's worth pointing out that I've written a book all about Contentful, which covers everything that you need to know from setup, installation, all of that good stuff. And it's called Contentful, The Missing Manual. Now you can buy this book from Lean Pub, which is linked to below. It's only 15 bucks and it will give you everything you need to be successful with Contentful. Now let's go back to the content. In order to basically use any of the APIs without worry, you're going to need to know how to access three specific bits of data. So what we're going to do now is log into the CMS and see how we can generate each one in turn. So the first bit of data is called the space ID, and this is related to the organization and the space that you want to query. So in Contentful, you can see that it's possible for me to create multiple spaces. Now, in terms of my space ID, you'll be able to find it directly within the URL. So hopefully you can see this here, this value here. The next bit of data you'll need is the environment ID. So you can kind of think about environments just like branches within Git. So it's possible to create a branch off the master branch so then different content editors or developers can work in isolation without impacting the main website. Now, in order to create a new environment within the top hidden, go to the settings option from here, you'll be able to see this environments tab by default. Every single content full space will be created with a master branch. Now it is possible to create a different one. Say let's call it development. And then these IDs here are the IDs that you'll need to reference within your code in order to access it. Now the final piece of the puzzle is an access key. We're going to need a way to actually validate that you're the right person and you can access content from the CMS. You don't want any Tom, Dick or Harry accessing your secure content. Now, in order to create an access token or get access to it, again, you can go to the settings tab. From here, we can go to API keys. Now, in API keys, you'll see that we've got the content delivery pre preview token. So what we want to do is click on the big add API key. And then from here, we're going to give it a name. So let's just call it website access. You can see that we've got our space ID here. And then we've got access to our content delivery access token and our preview access token. So when we're creating our code, making REST API or using the SDK, we're going to need this access token. Now, a lot of people will say, when I'm looking at my content, how do I make sure that content editors can see normal content and preview content? And this is dead simple. All we need to do is send the different API token. So because we have one for the main master content and we have one for preview, in order to create a preview mode, all you need to do is set something up like an environment variable and then pass the preview access token back to the CMS rather than the main content delivery API access token, and then you get returned preview content. So this is really nice because it means you don't have to write additional code. It's just basically switching that access code when the website starts up or app and everything is taken care of for you. And basically, these are the only three things that you need in order to be able to make requests from Contentful.
Now that you have that access token, space ID, and the environment name, you pretty much have all the data you need in order to use any API or SDK with Contentful. So let's see how we can map this into a specific request. Now, in order to access Contentful, you can either use the API or an SDK. And if I'm honest, all the SDKs really do is wrap calls to the API. So if you can master the API, you can master the SDKs really easily. Now on the screen, you can see my Postman. And in order to access the Content Delivery API, you will be accessing the cdn.contentful.com subdomain. Now in this example, we're going to then access a space. So we need to put spaces. Then using that space ID that we looked at, we pass that into the URL. Then we do environments. Then using that environment identifier that we mastered, then we add that in. Then after that, you put in the endpoint you want to query. In this specific example, I'm querying the entries endpoint, and I want to query Contentful for a single bit of content. To keep this video precise, in this example, we're just going to focus on the get entry endpoint. However, it's worth noting that the content delivery API can also do things like get assets, get spaces, and all that sort of good stuff as well. So in order to do this, I just do entries, and then at the end, I put in the identifier for the bit of content I want to query. So if I look in the Contentful itself, you'll be able to see that I've got that environment ID. Now in here, all I need to do is go to the content tab, click on any bit of content. And as you'll see, when we click on that content, again in the URL, you'll get access to the entry ID. The other way of accessing this same ID is via the info tab right here. Clicking on it, you can see that we've got the entry ID. And then from here, it's very easy to copy and paste it, add it into Postman. Now, aside from constructing a successful URL, the other thing you'll need is the access token. So the way that I like to do it in Postman is go to the authorization tab, click in here, set this type to OAuth 2.0. With your token, set it to available tokens, bearer, and then put in your access token. Now remember, this can either be your master access token or the preview access token, depending on what type of content you want to query. Then after that, simple case of doing a send, you can see that we've now got a status of 200 and I've got all my data returned. Now, when it comes to the data returned, a typical response from Contentful will be broken into the sys type, and this is basically metadata about the request. Fields will be the property about the content item that you want to query, and then metadata, this kind of like misc. And then you also might get things like pagination in here. Now that we've mastered the API, the SDK is really simple. So let's look at the JavaScript one because it makes life easier. In order to install the Contentful connector, just go to npm, do npm install Contentful. Now, after you do this, you can then establish a connection. So I'm not going to go through the complete code here. I'll do that in a future video. But what we can see is that we can import from Contentful. We do this create client. And then from here, we pass in the space. We pass in that exact same access token. And then from here as well, we can also add in the environment. Now, by default, the SDK is going to map to the master environment, so you don't need to provide it. After you successfully create that code to establish connection with the API, then the functions provided by the SDK pretty much marry up to the endpoints in the API. So in our example, if we want to query the CMS for a specific item of content, we can use the get entries function within the SDK. So we can do our client get entries, from here, we can pass in additional parameters. So in this example, we're passing in a content type of blog post. So this is going to turn us multiple items. And then from here, we can always access those items within the items collection. So if you look in the JSON, you'll see that the data is returned in the items object. Also, if we look in entries, you'll see that we have some pagination results. Things like limit, skip, total, all that good stuff. Aside from accessing content via REST, it's also possible to query contentful data using GraphQL. Now, I'm not going to deep dive into the benefits of GraphQL over REST here. However, some of the factors it has going for it include performance. GraphQL only returns the exact data you need in the presentation layer. Reduced network calls. The coupling of data and database models. Through its query structure, it allows you to combine data from different content models more easily. It can solve the over and under fetching problem. Now, if you decide you want to work with GraphQL, I have a handy tip for you, which will make querying much easier. 
and that is a marketplace app so basically if we go to apps right here go to marketplace then do a search for graphql you will see we have this graphql playground and from here after you install it you give it an api key but what you'll see is that in your app list you'll then have access to the playground and then clicking on this playground will basically give you access to a graphql explorer now from here you can then start doing your graphql queries and testing them directly within the cms itself so you can see here let's do total fire off my command we've got history so it's going to recognize what i've done previously but using this is way easier to get the data that you need rather than having to do it in code and recompile everything. So yeah, if you want to use GraphQL, highly recommend that you install this marketplace app. The next thing I want to talk about is probably the biggest hidden gotcha that you might encounter. And this is around linked assets. When it comes to your content modeling, it's possible to create content models that basically reference another content model. So what we can have is a chain of one content item links to another one, which links to another one. And we have all this sub nesting. Now, when you use the REST API SDK, the level of nesting that gets returned in your query is a bit variable. So if you use get entry and you search for a single item, you won't get any linked entries at all. Now, if you use the get entries endpoint, even if you search for a single individual item, you'll also get linked assets, which are linked to one level nesting depth. Now, by the API, it's possible to change all of this. However, it's very possible, and you'll bump into this all the time, is that you'll search for something and it won't have all the data that you expect. And in these instances, you might need to make another query or you might need to use another endpoint. Now, it's because we have these differences, I typically find that just using get entries all the time and using get entries, even if I'm searching for a single item, is a little bit easier because it means all my code's gonna work the same way, all the data and all the JSON I'm gonna get returned works in the same way, and I find it much easier to have a cleaner code base. The next API is called the Content Management API. And the purpose of this API is to allow you to perform more administrative operations with Contentful remotely. Now, the operations supported by this API include space management, environment management, content type management, content management, asset management, locale management, and loads more. Now, as you might have guessed from the name, the management API supports both read and write operations. Now, this is different compared to the content delivery API, which is only read only. So a good rule to keep in mind when implementing the CMS is to use the content delivery API when you want to render stuff on a web page or an app and use the management API when you want to update or write content instead. Now, translating this into more technical terms, the management API supports get, put, delete and post operation. Now, the management API also has its own NPM package and you can install this package using the command npm install contentful dash management. Now, one of the big gotchas with this API is when you want to update content programmatically. Now, the reason for that is you also need to supply the correct version you want to update as an HTTP header. And without supplying this value, you will bump into a version area whenever you update. Now, the reason for this header is simple. To stop people from accidentally overriding content. The good news is that the content management NPM package will automatically add the correct version number as an HTTP header for you when you're writing code. The bad news is that you need to still apply this manually when you're calling the REST API directly. You can get the latest version ID for any bit of content by using the get entries endpoint, then in the return JSON, you should see the revision. When it comes to accessing the content management API, you'll be using the API base URL of api.contentful.com. So this is different compared to the content delivery API, which uses cdn.contentful.com. Now, another thing that you need to know is that when you're using the content management API, you cannot reuse the same authorization token that you used with the content delivery API. So let's go back into the CMS. If we go to settings now, go back down here, go to API keys. Now, one of the things that you'll probably not notice the first time you look at this is that when you load the screen, it actually loads on a default content delivery preview token tab. And to the right of it here, you can see that we also have this content management tokens. If you want to use the content management delivery API, you're going to have to generate a persona 
give your token a name so like admin access whatever and then from here you'll get given an sdk access token key whatever you want to call it now this is the token that you need to use with the content management api do not get tricked into using this one here because you will just get some access issues so that is tip one next we'll quickly look at how to construct a query in postman for the content management api so we call the base url api.contentpool.com in here we're passing in spaces space id environments environment name and then for this endpoint we're calling the content types endpoint whenever you're constructing a query to contentful you'll always need to add in the authorization header so go to authorization add it as oauth2 set a available bearer token and then remember to use the api token that allows for admin access after this, in your HTTP headers, don't forget you'll need to add in the x-contentful-version for certain queries. Then if you actually want to query the content types endpoints, you'll need to add in the content type that you actually want to query within the request body. After doing all this, if everything goes OK, you should get a status OK and you'll get JSON returned from the response. Job is a good one. The final API that we're going to cover is the user management API. Now, at first glance, this API looks and behaves very similar to the content management API. You can access both of these APIs from the same base URL, which is api.contentful.com. The user management API exposes endpoints to allow you to work with things like organization memberships, invitations, teams, team memberships, space memberships, space members, space roles, and users. Now, I'm not going to cover all the API in detail, but in essence, if you want to remotely manage content editors, this is the API to check out. So as I'm hoping that you can see, accessing Contentful is pretty easy. You have a number of ways. However, as long as you understand the fundamentals, everything's pretty sweet and easy. Now we have reached that point in the video where if you haven't already, don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you catch up with this content. And if you have found value from this video, then please click on like because it helps you grow this channel. Now, if you do want to learn more about Contentful, then the good news is that I've recorded other videos all about it. So on the screen right now, you should see a video all about how to set up Contentful with Next.js and Netlify. So if that sounds good to you, click on that, learn a little bit more. Otherwise, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in this world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.